go back where I was. Hope a hope a hope. The guy is saying now that I can't do it, that I'm that I'm that I'm a little hard and I can't do as much like I was. That's messed up. I don't know what they're saying. I think I'm a lot better than I was. Some things I don't understand. Like my name, some things. What is my name? Boo-boo? That's messed up too. Peppy. Peppy's fine. I want to go back where I was. Why can't I? I was in the kitchen on November 1st, 2000. And an alarm went off. They said body alarm, 10 south. And that's where Peppy was in the terrace. When they, like always, everything was fine. This guy wanted to go, uh, he's ready to go. Nobody was here. Nobody, there's supposed to be four guys doing it. Nobody, just me. The minute it happened when, when they, they put the goddamn thing like that. And the first thing that I couldn't see. They made a mixture. They put it in one of those honey bear bottles that has a little spout cap. When Louis Pepe went to the door, when he opened the door, the other inmate rushed the door and sprayed it in, in his eyes. He was blinded by the hot sauce. It was like getting hit with uh, pepper spray. And the minute that happened, I had a, uh, 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 uh. And when they saw that, I said, well, they'll be here any minute. Control center on the radio, I heard the panic in his voice. Something's wrong, get up there. When help finally came, they had the keys to the wrong unit. Then they had to go back to the second floor in the control station to get the right keys. Then they started with bam, bam, two times, right? And bullshit, you know? I ain't gonna go nowhere. I, I, gotta, I got the, the stuff, the, what do you call it? That's just what they want. So sure enough, bam, hit me again, bam, again, bam, again, bam. November 1st, 2000 was a day that I will never forget. The thing that, of course, bothered me the most was how long it took for help to come to get him. What they did with the comb, it's a long, thick, black comb, which they don't sell anymore. And they broke the teeth off, the black teeth off. And they, every night, they have nothing else to do. And they rub it against the cement, like many other mates did. And they made a sharpened edge that you can kill somebody with. What struck me immediately was really the savagery of the attack. I remember all the ambulances flooding downtown Manhattan outside the Metropolitan Correctional Center. And just hearing about the nature of the attack, the way this makeshift knife was plunged into his eye and then of course into his brain, it, it was so brutal. It was something that stayed with me. And what else? <laughs> just, just, just a bad, uh, it's just it's a lot of, lot of things. They went to the back of, this, of the maze that was 10 South, which is one of the most high security in the world. And they saw Officer Pepe in the cell on the bed or cot. It was like a cement bed laying there with the pick in his arm and blood everywhere. The place was covered in blood. And Officer Pepe insisted on walking out with the comb in his arm. And he was speaking. And he said, I'm not sitting down. I'm walking out of here. And he said, I fought them off. I fought them. I did the best I could.
Okay, yeah. Cool. Be a nice day or what? Hey, man. Yeah. Give me a favor. You messed up. Yes, yeah, be careful, it's all messed up. Yeah. The old one is fine. So. Yeah. So I messed up that damn thing. You got it? Okay. Put this a little. <laughs> sure. I want to Yeah, thank you. Now you do everything. Huh? You get almost everything ready. Oh, well, I'm going to start you. What time? <laughs> You don't want too much, do you? Give me a lot, man. Mm -hmm. Give me a lot. Around 5 o'clock or so, then I get up and we have our breakfast. I like that. It's nice. We have it together. He enjoys it because he has trouble peeling oranges and cutting the banana. I usually slice the banana and put it in the cereal. Mine was the best. Thanks. I'll do it. Okay. I don't know. You get that feeling that you never know, you know, from day to day what it's going to be. Louis' attack had a profound effect on my parents. Louis lived with them. He took care of them. Louis, Louis' mission was basically to take care of them, and he really did. Well, when we were growing up, there was a three-year difference, and it was just Louis and myself. And Louis always kind of followed me. I guess he looked up to me, you know which was nice. There wasn't the sibling rivalry that most, most kids have together. He never lost time from work. The only time he lost time was when I had a, a valve put in. He took a leave of absence for me. But he was there every day early. He used to leave the house two hours before time so he wouldn't be late. He didn't know how to, to, to balance it, which, which was sad because way after the attack, he really said I should have enjoyed myself yeah. more. Louis basically was one of the first victims of Al-Qaeda on U.S. soil. One of the perpetrators who went to court and pleaded guilty He's considered a co-founder of Al-Qaeda. I tried to take the door, but I couldn't. He was going to get out. I was going to get out. I took the skin and put it in my eyes. He was brought to the United States with another defendant uh, because they were accused in the embassy bombings in Africa that killed over 200 people. Mahmoud Salim is Osama bin Laden's, almost his right-hand man. He's a very dangerous individual. He's a very cunning individual. If I have any chance, Salim told me, I will kill you. They were always planning to try and escape. Always trying to take hostages. Louis was victimized uh, by people who had apparently an allegiance to Al-Qaeda and he sort of disappeared from the consciousness of the public and then 10 months later Al-Qaeda became a household word after the 9-11 attacks.
tell you, Louie, you talk about anger and you talk about, you know, my own, you know, when I saw you with that, that handle sticking out of your head before you went to surgery and I said, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very positive, very, you know, I say he's going to die. And I just grabbed your ankle while they were rolling you down. Okay. And I was praying, praying out loud, please. And I said, I cannot leave your side. I said, because if I leave your side, you're going to die. And I'm like, why the hell didn't they get him to the hospital? The critical hour. Oh, right. That's the time when you got to do whatever you got to do if it's, if it's stabilizing. They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. And I, when I heard that you walked out of there, I said, how the hell would you let somebody that was, the, the lawyer said and your coworkers, you were full of blood. Right. How the hell do you let this guy walk out of there? And then bring you to the infirmary and, and clean you off? Clean you off for what? So you, they couldn't see what they did to you? Father O'Hara, he was with the prison. He was the prison chaplain, I guess you would call him. He called up and said that uh, when he got attacked and uh, he was at hospital, he was in he was in Bellevue. We didn't know, you know, what was going to happen with him. You know how bad he was going to be. Uh, nobody thought he was going to. Everybody was coming in and giving their condolences as though he was overly dead. But he fooled everybody. He, he got better. The impact on the attack on Rose Pepe was devastating on myself, other officers. Everybody cried. Grown men cried. Cried openly, openly on each other for days, days. They have to place the blame on something. They just can't say that they made the mistake. That they had one officer up there. They had two up. They had two inmate terrorists in a cell. And they were too cheap to pay the overtime to have another officer there. So a man's life got ruined. And instead of saying that this officer followed policy, which he did, they said it was Louis Pepe's fault. Everything you gotta do anything is no. Everything is no. Everything is no. I did not do this. No. They did it. I I did this. They actually they actually uh, uh. I repeatedly had spoken to workers' compensation about what was happening with Louis, with the prosthetic eye, with Major and Googleman who was who was uh, preparing it. Everything was all set, and then um, right before he was, he was in the middle of getting this eye, and we get a letter dated May 30th saying that they were not granting him the eye, the fitting, the fabrication, the, the follow-up treatments, uh, because uh, it has that further medical development is needed before the request can be approved or denied. We did a story on this, and two days later, the Department of Labor out of Washington, D.C. contacted Louie and his sister and said, oh, there's been a big mistake. Of course we're paying for the eye. So after three months, that's how long it took to put the prosthesis together, Louie did get the eye. Some crazy glue. Oh, sure. That'll work. Uh-huh. That'll work perfectly. Just to get it open, Pretty cool. a bit of a problem, but... <laughs> Ta-da! There's only one little thing. What? It looks cool, but it's not the same. You don't mind? No, it's Cost not I the too same. can't see. It's not the same. You don't mind? You want to I'm look, sorry. You want to look a little more normal, Yeah, don't okay, you? okay. Is Louie an angry man? He will never forget the, the, uh... The brutalness of his attack. It was a personal attack on all of us. It was felt by all of us. It was one of the most devastating things I've ever felt in my life. I know that they were very frustrated when the Bureau of Prisons wanted him to retire. In fact, he still considered 
an on-duty officer, even though he's not on active duty. We had a letter that we showed where the Bureau of Prisons wrote to him and said, due to your physical disabilities, uh, we believe that it would probably be best if you retired, but Louis refused to do that. Basically, the government just uh, threw my brother's life away without even any recognition for it. He wants to basically uh, get retribution for what happened to him. I still have a feeling that that when when I someday when I'll be dead, I'm going to see them, the two of them. And when I see them, I think I would like to kill them. How you two, how you doing, guys? How you doing? You have a nice day? You having some child today? You two guys, huh? What are you doing today? Nothing, like everybody else? What are you going to do today? Nothing. Every day you got to do it. What are you going to do? You having some child today, you two guys? Yeah? You two ass fucks. What are you doing? Nothing? You two little motherfucker, what are you going to do today? Like me. What are you going to do today? You having some child? That's what you're going to do, you two little motherfucker? That's what you're going to do? What are you going to do today? Nothing. Like me. And the, you guys, the two twins, what are you gonna do? You gonna see me someday too? You two motherfucker, what good are you? You little motherfucker. I'll see you. Have a nice day, you two motherfuckers. And you tries, you didn't get me out of here, did you? No. You have a nice day too, you two little motherfucker. Have a nice day. You two motherfuckers. See you tomorrow. I'm dead. I'm finished. You can't see anymore. I'm gone. I couldn't even day I could be dead. This fucking this thing is gone. This thing is bad. Every day it, it hurts. Jeez, next time, get the hell out of here, these people. I'm dead. It doesn't matter. I can go right now. It doesn't matter. I can't do nothing. I can't. I, got, I don't even have a go. Nothing. It's all died. This is all dead. What good is it? I don't even know your name. I don't all. Ten years, I saw me know your damn what your name is. That, that's bad. Look at me. This <laughs> is messed up. لا يمكن الاعتذار لما أنت تتسبب في إن واحد يفقد عينه. أنا مش عارف أقول إيه. اللي حصل كان غلطة وأنا مسؤول عنها. Sit there you, until before you. Well, you were in you what got they plenty call of that? The, stuff the, you can. Um, purgatory? Exactly. That's where you were? That's where the lot of Okay. And I think something else is very good there. Bellevue. No. Oh, purgatory? Very. I would want to go. I was better to go that way. I swear to God. But I went to nowhere. I had to go back. No, you were. You were you, you're here for a reason, I believe. You're, I, here, I you're here to save other officers and you're here to change things with the government. Believe me, what you've done changed a lot of people and saved a lot of people's lives. At some point, you're better off now than you were. Because you're respected, you're loved, and what you overcame, and you know, most people couldn't overcome that. So now it's time to start crossing over and to join the real world. getting older. I'm 52 going on 53. 
And my biggest fear is that if something happened to me, what would happen to Louie? What I would love to see, I would love to see us all go grow old together and live happily ever after. I pray that he meets somebody. I pray that he has, you know, a little bit of happiness, a little intimacy. I mean, he hasn't even kissed anybody for six and a half years. Kiss meaning being intimate with. And if something happens to me, I just hope that um, the government won't turn around and use that as a way to put him in a home or not do the right thing for him. Hello. Hennessy? It's more like uh, more like a more like a little like some nice little girl. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. not too much. Just a little bit. Not too much. More like a. Yeah. Hello. You know what happened with that, Louis? They didn't charge me for it. Uh -huh. Because I went into the liquor store and I got them so confused with all the bottles flying past. <laughs> when I left the place and I looked at the receipt, they didn't charge me for like thirty, for like close to forty bucks. His calendars. Makes him happy, that's the thing. As long as he likes it, he enjoys it. Can't do much else, right? He can't do what he would like to do, go out here and there, different places. As long as it makes him happy, I'm happy. So which is your favorite? Purple. The white one? Yeah? Nice. Yeah. She's just nice. The other one's yeah. <laughs> You have a whole stack of them too. Remember the one that you used to carry around with you that you really liked? Yeah. Oh, I never know. <laughs> never. No, no, never. What do you call it? Never say no. Did I ever have no. Uh, never, never never married. Married. Nobody. How about you? You had it? Did yeah. you have it, Ali? Yeah, I had it once. Did you have it? No, you would you be had it? it? Everybody had it. Everybody. Me, I don't have it. <laughs> That's, you know, and I'm nice too. I don't care who it is, as long as they're nice. Not like, uh, like them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They don't want it. All they want is they want to kill somebody. That's all they want to do. I'm not like that. I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you going nice to put on my head? Hey, man, you know what today is? All Souls Day. Yeah. No, All Saints, Saints Day. All Saints Day. Tomorrow is All Souls Day. My birthday. Good Catholic. What do you think? Your what sister's is this? a great Catholic. <laughs> you getting skinny. Five years? Louis. You are getting skinny, skinny. Louis. Feel this, feel this. Okay, now warm. Yeah, that's a warm for a day, a new one. Uh, yeah, let's put that in there. What are you doing? You're too very bad. Yeah, this, is, this is the way you do it. Ready? <laughs> Louis. Here's to you, Louis. Louis. Bye, everybody. Louis. Mazel tov. You slipped the cuffs, cool. but you fought them hard, baby. Yeah, you know I feel like I, uh, like I'm back again. I don't know why, what they did. I feel like I was dead, and now I come back. I, I really am. Yeah. Now, now you're free, Lou. Finally. Thank you.